Okay, <laughs> GAMSAT. It's a dog of an exam, but if you want to do medicine in Australia, graduate at least, uh, it's something you have to do. And if you're like me, <laughs> it's something you really struggled with. Year after year, I felt like I was just beating my head against the wall. But then something changed. In this video series, I'd like to outline how I took my score from below the 50th percentile to above the 90th, and ultimately got an interview for medicine. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the mindset shift that I found helped me and two specific strategies that I applied to every study session leading up to the exam, which I felt really, really helped me prepare. Since this is my first video, it's your first time here too as well. Uh, I'm Hugh and I'm a med school hopeful for the 2022 intake. Look, like I mentioned, the GAMSAT was the exam I really struggled with. Uh, I shot it three times and I got the same, same score every time. I think my first section three was like a 45. I mean, it was trash. Then in 2019, my life was pretty significantly disrupted. I didn't know it at the time, but some of the things that happened there taught me lessons that really carried over into my preparation and ultimately helped me do much better. The main one, I was full of shit. I'd sit down to study and spend half time looking at my phone. I'd get an answer wrong and then I'd convince myself that I got, would have got it right on the game day. Or, you know, I'd be struggling with a problem and then I'd go, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just watch a TED talk instead. And yet, I still had the audacity to convince myself that I was actually preparing. So the clincher was, and here's the lesson, don't look at what you're telling yourself you do, look at what you actually do. And this is really tough. And it's hard for a few reasons. Because first off, you have to admit that you're probably wrong, that what you were doing isn't right, and that's really hard. Secondly, you need to be vulnerable. That is facing the fact that you might not actually be good enough to do this, but proceed ahead anyway, and that's pretty scary. And then finally, you have to learn to monitor yourself and be actually objective about your behavior. One of the strategies I found helpful once I'd had this epiphany was that I needed to look at myself like somebody else was observing me. So you can sit and you can do this exercise, literally jot down, what exactly did I do? If someone was watching me, what would they be reporting back? And just, I can't stress this enough, don't lie to yourself. Don't make it up, don't say, oh, well, I did an hour study. No, be brutally honest, because only then can you move forward. The GAMSAT, it's long and it's really hard, and it tests your ability to not just think critically, but to do so for a long period of time and whilst you're under pressure. So if you're not used to sitting for three or four hours, completely undistracted, focused on the same task, then please, please, please don't delude yourself into thinking you're gonna be able to just show up and do it on game day. It won't happen, you need to train for it. But importantly, you can. At the end of section three, you wanna feel like you're still strong, like you're still putting in a good effort, you don't wanna be waning and fatiguing. So there's two things that I used, and I applied these to every single practice session I did leading up to my exam, and that was deep work, and deliberate practice. Cal Newport, probably one of the main proponents of deep work and he's kind of popularized it, but he defines it as a professional activity performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that pushes your cognitive capabilities to their limit. These efforts create new value, improve your skill, and are hard to replicate. So to put this into practice, there's four things that I sort of used to guide my sessions. Firstly, is it's a single task. You need to choose one thing to work on at a time if you're switching between tasks all the time, it's just not gonna work. Second is time blocks. And that sounds kind of obvious, but you need to dedicate time to this practice. One thing I found really helpful to get a very accurate picture of what I was up to is I'd start my watch timer when I sat down, but if I got up to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water, I'd stop it and I'd only begin again when I went back to my desk and started on whatever it is that I was working on. Thirdly, no distraction. And this is probably one of the most important parts of deep work is you have to be solely focused on only what you're doing. That means no other tabs open in your browser, no phone, turn it off, put it away, no people coming in and out, no discussions, nothing. Completely focused on what you're doing. Your brain needs to be only in that zone. That means that if you do get up to go to the bathroom, don't check the news, don't check the phone, don't speak to your housemate, just go come back to your desk. You can do it, it's just the amount of time you've allocated, but stay focused on it. And then finally, consistency of effort. There's an old saying, the muses bless those with discipline. This means essentially that those who develop a consistent routine and stick to it will reap the greatest rewards. You know, it's not the inspiration that comes first, it's the consistency of effort. You know what's bloody crazy though, is that 
The first few times you'll sit down to do this, you're gonna to wanna to pick up your phone, you're gonna to wanna to do all sorts of things, the compulsion will take over. You have to let that go and keep going. And trust me, if you put this into practice consistently, you will get better. So the next part of this equation is deliberate practice. And if you've read any of K. Anders Ericsson's work or perhaps 10,000 Hours by Malcolm Gladwell, uh, you may be somewhat familiar with this idea. But essentially, deliberate practice is defined as practice that is effortful in nature with the main goal of personal improvement of performance rather than enjoyment and is often performed without any immediate reward. Now, do you notice that? No immediate reward and without enjoyment. Sitting for two hours, undistracted, working through a problem that's difficult just sucks, but it's required if you want to get better. So just like deep work, the framework that I was using and I applied in every, every situation was as follows. One, Practice must be highly structured with the explicit goal of improving performance. So you can think of this like working through a practice question, but trying to understand the rationale behind why the answer is where it is, rather than just how to get there. Secondly, specific tasks need to be designed to overcome weaknesses and provide feedback. So you're really gonna to have to identify objectively what you suck at and work on those things. Let's say essays is something you struggle with. You have to write a lot of essays, get objective feedback from people that you know or you pay for or whatever it is, you'll need the feedback and then you have to put that feedback into action. Finally, the motivation to continue comes from the knowledge that what you're doing will have long-term benefit. That is, you're not always gonna to want to do it, but you're gonna to have to do it because you need to trust that down the line, it's going to pay off. So there you have it, a couple of things you can use to get you on your way. In future videos, I'm gonna be sharing specific strategies for each of the sections, how to better manage your study time and how to put it all together on game day. If you'd like to get these or you enjoyed this video, please, I'd love it if you like and subscribe. Uh, and if there's someone you feel might get some value from this, uh, please, I'd love it if you share it with them. Thanks.